If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum leadership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. I love Anchor because it's really easy to use, very accessible to record your podcast, and has excellent sound quality. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, I am Jennifer Lynn Purcell, aka Evertini Butterfly, bringing to you a living with an invisible learning challenge where we will discuss the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD. I don't know if you're a new listener or not, but I would like to share with you where I get most of my articles for this podcast. I've recently learned about a nonprofit that I would really like to help. It's the NVLD Project. In addition to doing research on NVLD, and working to get it back on the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, that is the DSM, they provide support groups for those with NVLD. You can find the NVLD project at www.nvld.org. All proceeds from this podcast and the ads will go towards the NVLD project. I will include the link for this in the description of the podcast. Please go to livingwithnld.com to learn more about my podcast. Also, I would like to announce that I now have created a YouTube channel for this podcast. I will post the link for this in the description for you. I would like to announce that we are going to have the seventh small Zoom meeting on June 19th from 10 a.m. Pacific time zone to 11.30 a.m. Pacific time zone. And if you want the Zoom link, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com or please join the small Zoom Facebook group that is connected with the uh, Living With NLD Facebook page. And I do put that link in each of the episodes for this podcast. All right. Today's podcast episode will be about driving lessons from my driver instructor that I had from Driver's Ed, my mom, my brother, and my dad. And if I sound a little messed up or like I'm struggling with my script, that's because I have a bad migraine today. So. Please bear with me. All right, so one of the things I'm still learning how to do in my life is to drive. Because with the visual spatial awareness, multitasking, fine and gross motor difficulties of having NLD, it takes one longer to learn this skill. This will be an ongoing thing that I'm learning from so this episode won't be a complete list which means I might even redo this episode or revisit it at some time on this podcast but I'm not going to give up on learning how to drive because it makes me feel more independent and is easier for me to get from point A to point B than it would be if I were to have to walk, bike, or use some other form of transportation than driving. I've learned sorry, I'm just okay. Sorry, I lost my place for a second there. So I've learned that you need to let the wheel come back after turning look all around you use your sin- signal properly be patient and be cautious be a little aggressive and confident well with your driving skills i've also been learning how to park my car properly and safely 
there's a lot of things I've been learning since I've learned, since I've been learning how to drive. Since I took a longer break from driving than I should have, I felt like I started all over after my accidents. But I think this is working in my favor because then I can learn from my family who are all better at driving than me because they have more experiences and are NTs. NT stands for neurotypical. My car accidents also gave me lessons. Luckily, no one got hurt. In my first one, I ran into a parked car, which had nobody in it. This happened because I took my eyes off the road for one second. I was knocked out because of whiplash. When I came to, I was scared and my heart was racing. I was like, where did my glasses go? Luckily, they were under the brake pedal. They weren't broken, and I was still, it, and I was still in my seat with my seatbelt on. My phone had come out of the dashboard holder because of the force of the crash. Also, I called Dad to let him know what happened. Luckily, he wasn't mad at me. He was happy that I was alive and not hurt. I tried to move the car, but I couldn't, so I called the police, and they called a tow truck. I did leave a note for the owner of the other car. Long story short, with both car accidents, no one got hurt because I was lucky. The second one, I think, was the other person's fault because of where it happened. And I didn't see him, even though I looked before turning right into his car on the passenger side. But he could have swerved to avoid me, which he didn't do. His car got more damage than mine because he kept moving or traveling. I put my foot on the brake as soon as I hit him and then pulled over. And I also think I was fortunate in both car accidents because maybe I had a guardian angel watching over me. And I think that's also been true whenever I've been driving because there could have been other chances when I had a car accident and I didn't have one. And um, that is a good thing. <laughs> Sorry, if you hear barking, that's my dog. If in both cases, I did what I was supposed to do, although with the second one, I should have reported it sooner and called the police while the other driver was there to see if they could prove it was his fault, not mine. He could have been speeding because of maybe being late with work. All I remember him saying was he was on the job, so he was in a hurry to get photos of the damage and exchange information. I don't know what kind of job he had. Maybe he had a delivery kind of job. I don't think it was Uber because I didn't see Uber or Lyft um, emblem uh, in the in his car. With the first one, I learned not to take my eye off the road even for a second unless you were at a stoplight. And even then, it's not a good thing to do because you don't know how long the stoplight is going to be. Um, and you don't know if when the stoplight turns green, if somebody is going to go through the red light. So... Don't take your eyes off the road. <laughs> Just pull over. <laughs> Lesson learned. And the second one, I learned that I should have called dad to help me out. I also learned that you should really look for four times before you turn and twice for left and right. So 
let me explain that. So usually when you're walking across the street, you look left and right just once maybe. I do it twice, but now I do it four times. So I look left, right four times when I'm crossing the street and when I'm driving because I don't want to miss a vehicle, a person, or a person on a bike, or a child, or anything that I could run into and um, cause an accident or hurt somebody badly. That's why I do that. Because something can change really fast in a blink of an eye. In the blink of an eye. Blech. Sorry. Tongue tied. So, the first article I want to use today is titled Sweet 16 NLD and Driving by Sierra Rivers, who is a mom who has a son with NLD. This article is from Psychology Today and is about her pride and fears that are discovered when she is trying to help her son learn how to drive. Here's a quote from her article, which is from Psychology Today. Um, I worry because one, what, sorry, I worry because once he gets his license, he will be driving on his own. I won't be able to help him navigate. He won't have someone saying, now slow down and make a right turn here, turn here, turn here, here means right here. Okay, now you've missed your turn, take the next right so we can turn around." End quote. I can relate to this quote because I think mom and other family members have concerns when they're in the car with me because of me having NLD and also because of the car accidents. But they do feel safe when I drive the car, especially as I am improving each time I drive. At least I hope they feel safe. Let me share one incident with you where my mom didn't feel very safe. And I share this with you because it was a recent lesson I learned and it does have a good ending to it. So I was looking in my passenger mirror and my driver mirror, the side mirrors, to see where my car was in relationship to the white lines on the freeway and on the surface roads. And and because I was doing that, my car was swerving too much. And mom was asking me why my car was serving and why I looked like I was distracted. And I told her what I was doing and she was scared because she was realizing I should be looking ahead. Or was Sorry, she was realizing I wasn't looking ahead of my vehicle to be looking at the relationship between my car and the white lines. I was looking in the mirrors. And the reason I wasn't looking ahead to do that, to see that relationship was because when I look ahead, it's harder for me to see where my car is in relationship to the white lines because of my visual spatial deficit, because of NLD. Unless I have an object to reference to like another vehicle in front of me. And sometimes that doesn't even help because the vehicle can be so far away. And so what now I've been working on because of my mom's suggestion was to imagine that my car is like I'm skiing to, and when I ski, I do look ahead of me and I scan 
where I'm looking when I'm looking ahead of me. And I look at objects to see how close I am to them and try to reference it based on that instead of looking in the mirrors. I still look in the mirrors to see where other cars are, but not to see um, how close I am to the white lines anymore. Um, it's not an easy thing for me to do because I'm not used to doing it, but um, that was something that happened where she was a little scared. I mean, not a little scared. She was scared. Um, and I could tell she was scared and nervous and um, just by how quiet she was on the drive. And I didn't like that. So I'm glad that I told her what I was doing. So anyways, back to the script. Because that was off the script. <laughs> um, so another article that I can relate to, which is titled Six Surprising Ways NLD Affects Me as a Young Adult by Michaela Hurst, who, is a who has a master's in social work, in social welfare. Um, quote, most people don't understand that driving a car requires awareness of space and death perception. People with NVLD awareness of space and death perception. Sorry, let me restart that quote. I messed it up. Most people don't understand that driving a car requires awareness of space and death perception. People with NVLD, like me, often struggle with these skills. So I've always disliked driving. I know, though, that the more you practice something, the more confident you and more confident and skilled you become. I have a driver's license and can drive. And one of my goals is to practice more so I can feel less nervous about it, end quote. And that article is from understood.org. And that is a good quote. I can relate to it because I still get nervous every time I drive because sometimes I don't know why I do this, but I imagine having another accident. But then I say to myself that it won't happen because I know I want to stay positive and I don't want to have another one, especially since it stays on your insurance record for so long. And because now I'm driving with other people in the car, my mom or my dad and my dog. And it's not just me anymore. So I don't want them to get hurt. Um, okay, so I can relate to this article too on the fear of driving, why I first looked into NVLD by Nisea Mika Moore. So who doesn't, and I'm talking about my own vehicle now, who doesn't like driving because of how many problems cars can have while you're driving them. My car that I have now has had quite a few problems when I've driven it. Like on my way back from a job interview, one time my car started to slow down on the freeway then the dashboard turned off, which was scary because of it being a Prius. Everything is electrical. And I didn't know why, so I pulled over. Then I called AAA and my dad to let him know what was happening. They, AAA could only drive me to a local mechanic because of the account I had with them the limitation on the mileage, I mean. Um, the mechanic figured out that the car had overheated and the cooling pump had cracked, which was why I smelled something burning when I checked under the hood. I called my dad and told him that. Then he came and got me and used his AAA account so 
we could have it pulled to a mechanic we could trust. So they um, had so 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 they could fix it for me. Um, it was probably the least expensive issue I had with the car because it was about nine hundred dollars. Actually, the least expensive one was replacing the regular battery because it can hold a charge, which was about four hundred dollars. The other ones I had were replacing the hybrid battery, which was the most expensive one. Also replacing back struts, front strut bar, reshaping the back brakes, and replacing brake light along with spark plugs was the next expensive one. I put more money into the car than it was to buy it. That's one main reason I was saving for a new one. So whether it's learning how to drive, be safe while doing it, how not to get into a car accident or feeling your body in space, I and others who have NLD still have these issues today. As I wrap up, I would like to say that I am grateful that I can drive even with all the challenges that NLD presents with it because there are some individuals who have it and can't drive because of their level of visual spatial challenges. I'm glad that's not true for me. I would like to hear from my audience and see what challenges you run into when you're driving, whether that's because you have NLD or you're trying to teach someone who has it to drive. Please comment on living with NLD with the answer or email me at living with NLD at gmail.com. You can also leave a review on Apple Podcasts with the answer. Thank you. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Talk to you next Friday. As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. I do have a website for this podcast. It is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram page for this podcast. It is called Living with NLD. I will include the links for those in the description. In conclusion, I would like to hear from my audience. If you know individuals with NLD that I could interview for this podcast, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. What are you interested in learning about NLD? I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. I would like you to practice journaling about your gifts and differences. Also see if there is a way that you can make that difference become easier for you to do than it originally was. Thank you for listening today, and please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Bye.